Hey guys, it's Sydney and welcome back to our channel. We are 36 weeks pregnant. Um, at this point, the baby is about the size of a head of romaine lettuce, which by the way, is the worst lettuce ever. And that's neither here nor there, but it's the worst ever. Uh, the baby's weighing in about six pounds and is about 18 and a half inches in length. At this point, they are gaining about an ounce a day and um, they're currently shedding like their um, downy like hair covering and the wax like substance that is also on their skin to protect their skin and they ingest it through the uh, amniotic fluid and this is what comes out in their first bowel movement which is called merconium and merconium is a black like tar like substance it's very very thick and sticky and so to prevent it from sticking to their skin and being extremely hard to wipe off um, I've read to add coconut oil to their bum as soon as you can so we're gonna try that and hope that it works um, but yeah so we're gonna split this up in the same four categories that we always do first will be the doctor visits second will be uh, body changes and symptoms third will be fitness and fourth will be the fun stuff that we've been up to so let's get into the video Now I go to the doctors every single week until we have the baby. Um, at this week's checkup, it wasn't just my normal heart rate and um, measuring check. Uh, she actually did an internal check uh, to see you know, if there's any dilation, things like that. So um, just so you know, these little internal checks, they hurt. They are not comfortable. They are not easy. They hurt. And she told me it would, and, and they do. They are very uncomfortable and they're very painful. I didn't, obviously didn't shed a tear, not that painful, but they are very, very uncomfortable. Um, but what they're checking for is to see just any dilation, to make sure the baby's head down um, and is in position. And so for me, um, the baby's head is down and in position, but I had no dilation, uh, which is a bummer because she said if there was dilation, she would actually be able to strip some membranes, which could get this party started. Um, but I had none, unfortunately. So, um, <laughs> so she wasn't able to do anything. And um, she said, I will not have another check until 39 weeks, unless I tell her that something drastically has changed between now and that point. So I'm a little happy that um, I don't have to worry about that again until my 39 week appointment. So my belly is measuring 36 centimeters, so right on track. And uh, the baby's heart rate was 150 beats per minute and it was strong. So that was great to hear. Everything's good with baby, everything's good with me except for the painful experience of having to have that check. But my guess is child labor is gonna be way worse, so I guess I might as well just get used to it. So in my last update at my 32 week appointment, I told you guys that I had ended up losing some weight and the doctor wasn't very happy about it. I'll be, I'm happy to report that I have gained those two and a half pounds back. So now I am at a 23 pound um, total weight gain so far in the pregnancy and I'm very proud of that because my doctor said she wanted me to gain around 25 pounds. So I'm still under that and I'm very happy with that because I figured I was gonna blow up with uh, the way that uh, I've always noticed my body to be. So uh, hard work pays off, that's all I can say. Um, lower back pain, still a thing, still there. It's not going anywhere anytime soon, I don't think, which sucks, but it's there, it's nagging. And also, for if you don't know, you cannot put Icy Hot um, or BioFreeze or any of those things um, on your back. Uh, I almost did, but I read it and it says you cannot use it while you're pregnant, which is a bummer because I definitely thought that would help me. So I like sitting in my car longer because I keep the heated seat on and the heat on the, from the seat actually really helps. <laughs> I've noticed that I've become much more unmotivated. I'm way more tired than usual, so now I catch myself, you know, sitting down a lot more, taking more breaks, and um, not really just being as active and motivated as I usually am. But I guess that's to be expected this far along in the pregnancy. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but my rings are no longer on. Um, my hands and feet have started uh, swelling off and on. Um, it's not a constant thing, but it's just one of those things where I don't want my ring to get stuck on and have to possibly be cut off or anything like that so um, I've just taken it off for the remainder of the pregnancy so that way I don't have to worry too much about it 
Um, one thing I've noticed that helps with my ankles at least is it, keeping them elevated. Um, when I'm like sitting down and resting, I'll keep them up so that way um, they will not swell as bad. And also at night, I also sleep with um, two pillows at my feet now so that way they can be elevated. Um, and that seems to help a lot with that. Most, most days they don't, my ankles don't swell, but if I catch myself sitting a lot, they will. So, um, to prevent that, I try and keep active, stand up more often, walk little bits, uh, just to keep them um, um, from swelling. Acid reflux has also become a huge issue. Um, it was becoming constant. It was no longer just a here and there thing. It was an all day, every day, all night thing. And my mom had told me to take Zantac um, 75 for the longest. She's been telling me to take that since um, I was, I believe, 30 weeks pregnant. And I was like, no, no, Tom's and milk is fine. So Dominic finally got me some Zantac because he's like, I can't deal with you suffering anymore. And I started taking it. And when I tell you the first day, it made the world of difference. I was like, mom, why didn't you tell me you'd make this big of a difference? And she's like, I told you to take it. Game changer. Zantac, if you are having acid reflux, get some Zantac 75, take it twice a day, morning and at night, your life will be changed forever. Cause it changed my life and now I feel so much better. I actually don't have any issues with um, acid reflux or heartburn at this point because of Zantac. So thank you, Zantec, you're the best. <laughs> so I still have an any belly button. However, I did wake up today and I found my first stretch mark. It's on my lower right belly and it's about an inch, inch and a half. And I'm bummed because I've worked so hard to not gain a lot of weight, thinking that'll make it so I don't have any stretch marks, which is a bummer to me. But if that remains the only one, I can deal with it. However, the baby has been served with their eviction papers because I do not want any more. So they've been put on notice. It's time to come out. It's time to go. <laughs> and with the baby getting as big as they are, I have noticed that I really just don't have much room in my insides anymore in my stomach and stuff. So eating like full meals, I will feel so sick afterwards. Uh, so I've started eating smaller meals more often. So that way I don't have to deal with that feeling because it is not a good feeling. And um, as for cravings, everything I want is like tomato based. So I want pasta with marinara sauce, nothing else but marinara sauce, um, pizza, uh, spaghettios, uh, caprese salad, uh, bruschetta. You, I mean, you name it, that's what I want. Anything with tomatoes, that's my craving right now for whatever, for whatever reason. Now on to fitness. I knew this day would come. I have slowed down majorly at the gym, majorly. I'm talking like now I'm going like two, maybe three times a week. Um, and when I'm there, I'm getting on the treadmill and I'm only walking. So I'll walk between like 1.7 miles to 2.25 miles, just depends um, where my energy levels are at and how fast I'm walking. Um, Cause I try and do it in about 30, 35 minutes and then I'll stretch. And then if I have more energy, um, I will go over to the weights and I will do kind of like um, a lift for each muscle area because I'm really trying to keep muscle memory at this point. At this point, I'm not trying to even keep toned or put on any muscle, anything like that. I'm just really trying to keep my muscles in the um, motion of, uh, you know, the movements or whatever. So that way my muscle memory stays good. And uh, cause I've worked very hard <laughs> to keep going all this time to give it up now. And another reason I'm still trying to make it to the gym, even if I'm doing just barely anything, is still, it's still the habit of going. Because if I get out of the habit of going to the gym, it's gonna be three times as hard to get back in the habit of going to the gym once the baby's here. So I'm still trying to keep it as a habit. Um, I'm also still walking the dogs. They get walked like probably by me. Um, about four or five times a week and that's between a mile and a half to two miles in addition to what I do at the gym so um, that's keeping me up and active as well and as for my macros or diets um, I'm no longer keeping track of it um, I know my weight gain has been very steady at this point and I really haven't gained much in the past couple weeks so um, I actually stopped counting my macros around week 30 but 
once baby is here, it is back to business. And um, I'm gonna take you guys along my postpartum journey, my postpartum fitness journey and everything that I do. Um, obviously it's gonna be useful for those that are just starting a fitness journey as well or those who are still gonna be starting. So I'll go back to intermittent fasting and all that good stuff. Um, so be ready for that. Uh, but as of right now, I'm not counting my macros or anything like that. So for fun stuff, um, this past weekend, we actually got to go do our hospital visit um, and visit the unit that we'll actually be delivering in. And so we went into the delivery room and it's painted green and you, there's ambient lighting, um, there's couches and chairs and um, there's a mini fridge that you can put your snacks in and a pantry and all kinds of cool stuff, bathtub in the bathroom, it's so cool, so nice. And I was like, oh, this is great. I can't, I'm, I'm excited to deliver here, it's really nice. Uh, but actually, two hours after you deliver, you'll be moved to your recovery room. Now the recovery room is complete opposite. You, we went up there, it's three floors up. And um, so we went there and it is stark white walls. Stark white, bright white lights. There's no ambient lighting, no turning it down or up. It's either all the way on or all the way off. Um, the bathroom just has a shower in it. And it was funny because as we, they were, we were in there and everyone was talking, I was sitting in like the only chair that was in the room. And I asked, I'm like, so if my husband's gonna stay here, where does he, where does he sleep? And the lady's like, oh, well the chair you're sitting in, which is way smaller than the chair I'm sitting in right now. Like literally it was like hip to hip for me. Um, she's like, oh, it just, it leans back and that's, that's where he would sleep. That's his reclining chair. And I was just like, what the room downstairs I had a couch and all this other stuff like why is that not here in the recovery room it was crazy to me um no mini fridge no pantry uh the other cool thing though um is that the baby is with us 24 7 she said they actually don't even have a nursery anymore she said that um if moms like need a break or something like that they'll pull the baby out there with them but there's no longer like a dedicated nursery like you're used to seeing um, back in the day where all the babies would go from the room into the nursery and then they go back to mom for nursing They go back to the nursery. That's just not how it's done anymore. Apparently everyone every the baby stays with mom and dad the whole time um, Mom dad and baby also get um, Bracelets because if the baby goes beyond a certain point um, an alarm will sound so <laughs> uh, You know gotta watch out for baby theft apparently apparently that's the thing I didn't know but um, it's pretty cool, but yeah, mom, dad, baby, I'll get the bracelet, so it's not a big deal. We also found out that we will be in the hospital for three days. So you have the first day is the delivery day, and then you have recovery day one, and then recovery day two, and you leave it like the end of recovery day two. Um, and then if you have a C-section, then you have recovery day three. But she said that um, if the doctor allows it, you can actually leave a day earlier, as long as everything clears out and you're medically cleared to go. So we could actually leave on day two versus day three, um, which is really cool. And also where we're delivering, and they have an area that is dedicated to those who wanna do a natural birth. So no drugs, no monitors, none of that stuff. And it is the four seasons of hospital delivery rooms. I mean, these rooms are crazy. Um, but your girl will not be there because I will have an epidural. There's, I, there's no reason I wouldn't unless we got there and I was like dilated to a nine and they uh, couldn't do it for whatever reason. But that's not my plan. It's not my birth plan <laughs> at all. Your girl's gonna be getting the goods, okay? Okay. And also I don't wanna hear any judgments down below, okay? Our baby shower was great. We have like a whole stockpile of stuff. We literally got everything we needed. Um, for this baby and we are gonna want for nothing. The baby's not gonna want for anything. We're not need, gonna need diapers for a long time. Um, we are just so blessed uh, to have such loving family and friends to shower us the way that they did. Um, we really are just, you know, we're, we're just kind of speechless. It's just, we got so much of stuff. We literally got everything on our registry. It's, it's crazy. Um, and we actually had two. So I had one up here where we live. And then because most of my family lives three hours away, my mom um, had another one for us down um, in Indiana. And 
my brother and my sister-in-law are actually due one exact week after we are. So we had a joint baby shower uh, for our, fa our family and friends to down there to shower us. It was really cool. Um, you know, it's really excited to be going through this with my sister-in-law because she's feeling the same stuff that I'm feeling. So it's just nice to have someone to talk to about it. Um, and you know, and my parents are just gonna get overloaded with grandkids in May, which is really, really cool if you ask me. <laughs> we also put the car seat bases in the cars. Uh, the, and the car seat itself is actually in the truck because that's the vehicle we plan to take to the hospital. Our hospital bags are packed and they're in the truck as well. Um, you know, it's crazy to think because it's now we're 36 weeks, it's literally around the corner. Um, we're just so excited and we can't wait for baby to make their appearance. We are so ready for them to get here. Um, but that's pretty much all we have. Uh, if you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss another pregnancy update with us. Uh, who knows, this could be the last one. I, I, I don't know, maybe <laughs> uh, if they decide to come super early. Um, but until next time, make sure to live your best life.